How concerned do you think we should be about vaping? We should be very concerned. So when it comes to smoking or vaping, there's the thing that's being consumed, the, the thing that people are trying to bring, put in their bloodstream, nicotine, cannabis, et cetera. And let's just set those aside. I've done episodes on nicotine and cannabis and um, they have their application. They also have their problems. Vaping is terrible because of the other chemicals that it delivers to the lungs. It's also very clear, and we haven't released this episode yet, but I talked to a female hormone doc from Austin, uh, Natalie Crawford, so OBGYN. You know, vaping is associated with disruptions in egg health and what they call egg quality can create certain mutations in eggs um, and serious endocrine issues in women, okay? Um, personally, I find it disgusting. Like I just find it like I don't do it, but when I see people vaping, like to me, uh, and listen, I used to when growing up, I I, don't, I quit smoking a long time ago, but I used to smoke a bit of nicotine growing up. Remember, I was I was a wild one, but that's not why I did it. I just, I, you know, nicotine works for me as a drug, and I don't do it anymore. Um, but vaping is so addictive; it's a mutagen. It mutates the genes of cells. It mutates the genes of rapidly dividing cells most. So breast cancers, ovarian cancers, egg quality, you know, sperm are constantly turning over. So, you know, people always say, no, well, I vape all the time and I got so-and-so pregnant or whatever, you know, when let's say I have a perfectly healthy kid, that kid might've been much healthier. And also the kid's not grown up yet. Like introduce me to the kid later. I wish for that kid. I pray for them, but um, that they're healthy as can be. But it is so clear that you're introducing a, a laundry list of toxins to the lungs and they're getting into the bloodstream and they're are a number of them that cross the blood brain barrier. And once they cross the blood brain barrier, those neurons, by virtue of the fact that neurons don't turn over across the lifespan, you're born with the ones that you're gonna die with. You might add a few across your lifespan, but you're mostly born with the ones that you're gonna die with. Well, they're gonna harbor those chemicals and those particulates. And, you know, yes, our we have grandparents that smoked and lived to be 90, but you know, those are generally the outliers. So I, I can't find one good reason why people should vape. If they if people want nicotine in their system that badly, and here I'm not recommending that, they would be much better off relying on a troche or a patch. Yep. Um because they um, or whatever. Or even doing. toothpicks or in, or you know, or injectable. I know people, I'm not gonna out Inject anyone. Inject nicotine. Oh, I'm not gonna out anyone here, but I I know um people in our podcast community that rely on nicotine injections for, Fuck, that's for, for mental clarity. That is so yeah. hardcore. Yeah, I don't. It, it causes um, elevation in blood pressure. It causes um, vasoconstriction, but it also will robustly increase focus and attention. Yeah, as any smoker will, like, will tell you. Um, mainlining nicotine. Yeah, you're starting vein. to see some companies that offer things like NAD infusions all, also offer subcutaneous or, or um, nicotine injections. Go, yeah. uh, going back to or the- Or patch or gum. Yeah. Smoking for a very long time, everyone knows- huge campaign, which I think was pretty effective, actually, at kind of discouraging people from smoking or at least making them aware about the- Do you, do you remember how they got p kids to stop smoking? They told them for years it was bad for their health. That didn't work. They told them um, that it was putting money in the pockets of these like uh, of like these old cackling white guys that were like- rubbing their hands in, in the, in, the up in the boardroom and making a ton of money. And then it became the rebellious thing to quit smoking. Oh, that was the effective campaign. So I, I think about this all the time, that there was a big push to uh, both disincentivize and make more different smoke, uh, make more difficult smoking. You got to go outside, there's the smoking area. Mm -hmm. I remember I worked in clubs for one year before the smoking ban came in yeah. in the UK. Yeah. And then people had to go outside, you know, just friction, friction, friction all the way down. And then vaping came in. And vaping is way more enjoyable of an experience than smoking ever was. You ha you can have a higher dose of nicotine that tastes, you know, enjoyable, bubblegum flavor and raspberry unicorn dust and whatever, whatever. I don't know. Uh, and it's not going to stink the house out. You know, you, you don't have any of the externalities of that. So I wonder whether we have ended up in a net benefit or net cost for public health from switching mm. from smoking to vaping. Yeah, there's an analog here with, you know, kratom and opioids. Uh, you know, if you really want to, yeah. we just got to put ourselves under attack by even bringing up the topic, but I did it intentionally. Um, you know, there are things like smoking and opioid addiction, which are, it's unequivocal. It's just terrible, right? It crushes lives, destroys lives. My vote is to not vape. I think, um, 
I'm just shocked at how many people vape. And first of all, it, it's actually not unlike cigarette smoking, it's expensive. That's not the main reason people avoid it, but it, it's a significant expense when you add it up across the year. It's clearly addictive. There's no question about it. It's clearly detrimental to lung function. And then people like how it makes their brain feel. And they think that if they're already pretty active, physically active, then they can offset some of that. And they probably can. But um, I think in the next five years or so, we're just going to see a slew of studies showing that vaping is just bad for us, especially for the developing brain, because it's bringing in at a very rapid rate, high potency nicotine and high potency cannabis. According to recent studies, approximately 4.5% of American adults admit to using vaping devices. However, the statistics take a concerning turn when we focus on the younger demographic. Shockingly, 11% of young Americans, particularly in the 18 to 24 age group, have been drawn to vaping. So, why has vaping become so popular? There are several reasons behind this trend. For some, it's the perception that vaping is a safer alternative to traditional smoking. Vape pens and e-cigarettes are often marketed as less harmful, with the absence of many harmful chemicals found in tobacco products. Additionally, the variety of flavors available, from fruity to dessert-inspired, attracts people who may find traditional tobacco less appealing. Social factors also play a significant role. Peer influence and the desire to fit in with a particular group contribute to the increasing numbers of young vapors. The portrayal of vaping in popular culture, including social media and entertainment, further normalizes this behavior. However, it's crucial to acknowledge the potential health risks associated with vaping. While it may be perceived as a safer alternative, vaping is not without its share of concerns. The long-term effects on respiratory health and the addictive nature of nicotine raise questions about the overall impact on public health. 